Welcome to... Well, it's 6.15 now. <laughs> what did I just try to do that you just stepped all over? I think you're lagging. I think your pipes aren't that Yeah, that yeah. Wide. Did you check to see if you were lagging? I'm not yeah, lagging. lagging. Welcome to Listen to Player 2, a video <laughs> game review review show. My name is JoJo, and begrudgingly, I will be your player one. My name is Jeff, and enthusiastically, I will be your player one. My name is Kim, and I don't think there are any other emotions for me to be your player one. <laughs> There's really no other emotional state. That's, I'm here because I have to be here, and I'm here, and I'm excited to be here. That's the two flavors of podcast personality. Oh, you think so? <laughs> as let's do this, and I guess we have to do this again. Yes, we're doing this then. There's another kind of podcaster that you haven't picked up on. And, I'm, mm-hmm. and actually, as a fellow podcaster, I'm embarrassed that you didn't catch this one. Okay. And that is the podcaster whose goal is to help empower other podcasts. Oh, okay. So to give advice to other podcasters. I'm looking at conversation starters for podcasts. <laughs> Haven't we done this? I, I feel like that's a thing we've looked no, no, into. No, no, we no. Maybe do, not we just, do, we just do conversation starters sometimes as like a get. Right. Mm. My favorite are like the, the romantic conversation starters. Those yeah. are hilarious. Oh. How many siblings do you have? Sexually? Not sexually. But like when you're on a date, like that's one of you're supposed to ask about the other person's family. Oh. I, d- I never I never did that because I did not care. Well, that's why you were alone for a very, very, <laughs> very, very, very long time. Yeah. Yeah, Kim. It was. <laughs> I mean, among other, <laughs> among other things. So there is an app you can get called Poddex. Called what? Pod what? Poddex. Dex. Poddex. Now, I know this is a video game review review show, but as we are part of this art form known as podcast, I thought it might be somewhat valuable for us to sort of like put our sick twisted spin on Poddex. So like, is is it kind of like what's on deck? Is that kind of the way like... I guess, but this is what it says on their their description. It says, are you ready to take your podcast interviews to the next level? That was a rhetorical question because pod decks are the hottest tool to get your next great interview. Unique interview questions in the palm of your hand. That's a sentence fragment. Access our library of decks that contain thousands of unique interview questions that will create thought-provoking responses, and spark your next great conversation. Did you pay for this? No, I didn't pay for this. I would never pay for this. We add new decks every single month. In addition to our library of decks, you'll get access to any physical decks you purchased at poddex.com for free. Poddex.com for free does not seem responsive (laughs) at the moment. (laughs) I'm unable to go to that website. Chrome doesn't like it for some reason. Well, I'll try it on uh, Foxfire or whatever. Oh yeah, no, it works on it works on uh, Firefox. They must have blacklisted me because they know what I was doing. Yeah, they they're tuned into podcasts currently being recorded, so they know what we're doing. You know what? Here's what's interesting. I'm using Firefox too, and it's not loading for me either <laughs> for this website. Oh crap! Do I have malware now? <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm confused. So the concept is. You're a podcaster who wants to create content, yet you do not know how to ask or create a question. Don't know how to hold a conversation. This app is way more than just great questions, which thank God, because the price of the price on this is a little. Wait, what's this description? I'm looking for the price. I can't find it. I'll tell you guys once we get through it. Um, the, The members area jam packed full of tools, resources and trainings to help you find your voice, grow your audience and start your very own podcast movement. Okay, (laughs) that's a pretty bold claim. Have you heard of Martin Luther King? Well, that's because he didn't use Poddeck. Poddeck is really promising a lot, but it was it was seen on four different podcasts, so that sounds pretty good. Which is odd because usually podcasts you don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good it is, Jeff. The the members area also includes discounts on the favorite podcasting tools, products, software, and courses. And guys, I'm gonna just throw this out there to you and everyone listening. Anyone who's giving advice about podcasts, about equipment or anything like that, if they say the exact same five things. Every single time, you do not need to pay for this information. Also, the members get access to their secret royalty-free music library with tons of pod-safe tunes that you can use legally in your podcast, or you can just find them for free Yeah, the internet. Yeah, this thing called Google. You just take that thing you just read on pod deck and copy and paste it into Google, and it'll probably find yeah, you something. that's how it works. So, so they asked what we're waiting for. We should sign up today and watch our download numbers skyrocket which is absolutely one of the wildest things. That doesn't sound real, but okay. Now, the, yeah. All right, I'll so do the, it. <laughs> thank you, Kim. Now, <laughs> now, there are reviews on this. And uh, is it is a review from, I hope it comes from the name of the podcast that used it and not just a person. I think they're all from the same person. 
at different times. This okay. app has 82 ratings, all five stars. I want it to be 82 downloads. That- <laughs> <laughs> And here's why I suspect chicanery. Every one of these is written as if the person writing it knows how to type. Oh, well, they can't think of their own interview questions for their podcast, but typing is something that they're definitely on. Now, here's a review, and I know we never do this on the show. We never read reviews, but here's a review of Poddex the app by Nikki Did KY, as in Nikki had sex with Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Innovative. No way you'll run out of content or bored when you have this app handy. This is not innovative. <laughs> I feel like it's missing the point of what a podcast is supposed to be entirely. Like innovative. And then this next part's a lie. One of the best parts of a good conversation are the random tangents on subjects you never thought you'd get to. Hey, we talked for a pretty long time about Gonorrhea last time. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't like say shit like this if you can't back it up with evidence. Mm-hmm. And then they also say, and this is a solid way to get into that zone within mi- within minutes. Wait, so this thing is promising that I'm going to go on random tangents? This This thing is promising that you will be unable to focus in minutes. Yeah. Hook your listeners sooner, keep them longer, like the tobacco company. Five stars. Now... And you said it earlier, and I guess it didn't sink in until you were reading this fake positive review. You have physical cards that you get to you use. You could have had like, physical cards. I don't think they do that anymore. I'm pitch- So they, you, buy, you buy cue cards. You're buying cue cards for a podcast. I'm just picturing that bit from SNL where Chris Farley interviews famous people and just awkwardly reads things off a small piece of paper. Is that what this is? So... You ever know, like, in a, in a TV show where someone's about to go on a date and they're, like, a loser? I don't know, any, I don't know anything about that. I don't, I don't know anything about that. So, hypothetically, you have someone who's going to go on a date and they're, like, a loser. Not me. But somebody like Jeff. They come to you, the hero, and they say, like, what do I say in order to make this person want to, like, go into my bed and, and look at my genitals? I told them I have a podcast and I didn't get them going already. <laughs> now, there's two paths you can go on. The first path is the path of the hero, where you go... Just be yourself. You don't really need to like overthink this. Just kind of like be who you are and and share your interests and show genuine interest. Now, the other direction, what I like to call the villainous path is where you go, here's a list of things that you can say. Mm. You fake son of a bitch. So it's lying. It's lying. The whole thing is just lying. Yeah. Well, that's that's what trying to make people like you is, Jeff. This is like when you found out that uh, that the world is a popularity contest and you were surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt bad for winning because I just had people who knew me. <laughs> and that was almost as bad as when I found out the world was a vampire. You, <laughs> you keep forgetting that the world is a vampire just so you can rediscover it. My favorite part of that is realizing it. Because <laughs> <sighs> I had all this rage. This, I, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of getting eternally frustrated the more we talk about pod deck as a concept well we can't we can't zero out the conversation until we do one final thing how much do you think this costs i'm so worried about this wait are we talking is it monthly or is it monthly or annually i'm going to let you guys think through what this no 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 no. i want it has different subscription models so you like access levels Hmm. like maybe so you you can get pod decks pro or Prod, Poddex, the weenie edition. Poddex Basic, Poddex Pro. That's right. Poddex Wi-Fi only. <laughs> I'm going to say for Poddex Pro, for premium Poddex, for all the noodles. It's hard to put a price on brilliance. $79 a year. Okay. That's a lot, but like not, I, mean, I feel like that's... A- that's correct. Really? Yes. I didn't even get to guess. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Jeff. <laughs> She won. <laughs> unless, unless you were going to say seventy nine dollars. I was yeah, going to say seventy nine dollars in a more official tone is what I was going to do. Let me hear what that sounds like. It's seventy nine dollars, Joe. Okay, I'm going to get it in post. It's seventy nine dollars <laughs> uh, for the annual. You were also correct that there are two levels for all of this. So there's a seventy nine dollar annual and a thirty nine dollar annual. There's a ten dollar monthly and a five dollar monthly. Yeah, so what are you missing out on if you if you don't get the the whole shebang? The basic one if you use it but your podcast your downloads don't skyrocket, they delete your podcast. You shouldn't. You don't need it. You okay, should. Now now that we did the price, I can actually google it and I want to see what this dumb piece of shit yeah. looks like. Uh E D H R E Oh no, this is a this is Magic the Gathering. What no, the you're just looking at Magic the Gathering. <laughs> now that kicks ass actually. And, and yeah. you know what? If you used a Magic the Gathering card to <laughs> 
part of the podcast conversation. Now we really have something. <laughs> Wait, hey guys, can I can I talk to you a little bit about Rowan's Scion of War? Now listen, this this cat's pretty cool. He's a legendary human wizard. All right, and he loves to menace, which is which is when you know he he makes all the uh, black spell cards red. That's what it says here on this Magic the Gathering card. Rowan's Scion of War. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, his strength oh, is a wow. four and his defense is a two. Now that's pretty good. Today we're going to be talking <laughs> about the newest Avatar, the last airbender series that's coming out soon, which is much akin to Mirkul, Lord of Bones, a legendary <laughs> creature that as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total, Mirkul, Lord of Bones has indestructible. Half your starting life? That's wild. Yeah, it's a, uh, what does it need? I'm not really great at magic anymore, but this motherfucker uh, is pretty intense looking and has really good art on the card. Now, as Kim, well. pull up your it. pod deck and, and tell <laughs> me what magic card it shows you. I actually went directly to the geekiest thing I've ever seen, which is a custom Magic the Gathering card of you and your loved one, the anniversary. It's called Enchant. When the anniversary enters the battlefield, two target humans become bonded for eternity. This enchantment is indestructible and hexproof. Enchanted creatures gain lifelink and have a plus one, plus one counter for every year they have been bonded. That's a pretty great card. That's a cool gift. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't think any of our parents played that card when they were supposed no, to. No, yeah. They, uh... They didn't have enough mana. No. They didn't tap their lands. There's John's Playful Ones. It's a creature's cat. When John's Playful Ones enter the battlefield, target player gains five life and draws two cards. Aww. Is this the start of Kim's uh, Magic the Gathering era? Is this is this when it begins right now? When I finally understand Magic the Gathering because... Look, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, oh, you could do a you can do a Magic the Gathering pregnancy announcement where it's new player, legendary human baby. Life link during your upkeep, put plus one plus one counter on new player. New player cannot attack until there are nine counters. <laughs> new, new player will sup at your mana pool every turn until eighteen turns have passed. God, people are, people sell anything now. Yeah, I tell you what. See, but at the very least, I think that gave us a bit of a conversation, unlike what we're going to do for the main part of our show, which, by the way, this is a video game review review show. Around the show, we look at the reviews of recently released video games in order to find out which ones are worth playing. That's right. We trust the wisdom of other gamers to know how we should spend what limited time we have on this earth. The game that we are going to be looking at the reviews of on this day will be Lies of P. P. <laughs> P. <laughs> Which Fucking, we're gonna, I we're gonna have, okay, let's get this all out now. P is like urine, right? That's why it's that's funny. And, yeah, and but like it's a, also like a pee pee. Yeah, it's also yeah. like wiener. I love that. That's so fucking good. Up until just yesterday, when we were discussing it, thought that you were making some sort of a goof when you would talk about this game. I did not know it was a real <laughs> game that you were talking about. I. I just assumed that Lies of P was some kind of like a code for a different game that you were playing. No. I'm seeing it with fresh eyes. Lies of P was created and produced by NeoWiz Games and uh, was developed by (laughs) NeoWiz and Round 8 Studio. NeoWiz is a uh, (laughs) Korean-based company. This is so fucking good that their game has P in it and it's made by Wiz. And eight I looks know. like a pair of balls. This is such a great, funny <laughs> company. Is the publisher like Eureka Tech? What's oh going on? Oh my God, we can only hope. Maybe that's it. Maybe this whole game is just a big extended dick joke, which is also the best way to do a dick <laughs> joke. Um, the genre is, as you can guess, <laughs> it's a Dark Souls, Souls-like game. That's what it is. Is it? Really? I didn't know that. Okay, I thought it was just like a horror Without, game. Out with zero irony. Like, they're not even trying to hide it. It is just a Dark Souls Bloodborne style game. Like, that's exactly what it is. The Blender, in case you were wondering, it's like Dark Souls and Pinocchio because the P stands for Pinocchio. <laughs> right, because it's lies and Pinocchio's got that nose that's thing. Right. He's got that nose thing. His yeah. nose does not get bigger when you lie, though. Not a me. Okay. Yeah. New well, Game Plus. That seems a little. It was released. On September 19th for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Windows, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. The price, of course, $59.99. Of course, $59.99. Could be nicer. Unless 
you have Game Pass. Oh. And then it's, uh, you, you pay for Game Pass. But you don't feel like you pay for Game Pass, which means you don't pay for Game Pass. But you, you, but you pay for Game Pass with money, but then also you make everyone else pay for Game Pass by constantly saying that you get this game free on Game Pass. Do you remember uh, a couple like episodes back when I said Game Pass is like, it's probably bad that it exists. Like, it's probably bad for the market. Right. There was a huge leak of files from Xbox that <laughs> pretty that much leak. proved that to be true, <laughs> which I think is really great. Um, Jojo pointing out that he was right. Lies of P enjoys a 80 on Metacritic for PS5, 82 on PC, 84 on Xbox. It does not have reviews on Xbox One or PS4 exclusively because critics, they don't want to keep their old systems. They, oh, they traded them in at GameStop to get the new ones. So we're just going to have to assume they match. Okay, let's just say that they traded in their old systems to get a game because that's maybe as much as you can get for trading in a whole fucking system. Yeah, that's true. I traded in a GameCube to get World of Warcraft when I was younger. And how do you feel about that now? I bet you wish you had that GameCube still, don't I you? I got it. I bought another one. I'm, bet I'm, you wish. I got, I'm an adult. <laughs> on Steam. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a grown up. I'm a big now boy. on Steam, <laughs> there are 2,363 reviews for this game. 88% positive, which is interesting. Because it, by all accounts, is a very positive experience, uh, but is not doing so hot in the old units moved department, which uh, is not necessarily good because this kind of game is expensive to make and sell. Is there like, is there numbers for like units sold? That's actually probably going to be the hardest part of like game sales going forward because of things like Xbox Game Pass. Like we haven't, we really don't know. I don't know how you can. We've smeared the numbers across the screen. We'll never know. It's a real mess. Reviews fall into three big types. Um, The first type, of course, memes. Got to have Memes, yes. Always memes. memes. The second type, I really hate DeNuvo. Oh, it has de nuvo, de nuvo. Oh, no. I don't know what that is. It's basically an anti-cheating software that makes your mm. computer, your big boy computer run more batter. And not batter as in cool, Kim. Batter as in like a negative. Now, what's interesting about the de nuvo ones is... Never heard of it. They're normally always paired with, but I love this game. This is a bad review, but I love this game. And I didn't mention it, but there are a lot of reviews that are just like, I love this game. So the de nuvo is a sub flavor of I love this game. I love this. However, wish I could cheat. Yeah. Wish I could cheat. Yeah. Now the third type of review is actually too the much, most fascinating. Too, too much penis stuff. Too much pee pee stuff. <sighs> no, yeah. That's not so much. Are pee-pee. you telling Phallic. me that a company called Wiz that was published by the group called balls, which is the number eight <laughs> put out a game called P and there's not, there's too much pee pee <laughs> or not enough. Or not enough. You know, those, those are the two. I two thought reviews. there'd be more. I thought there'd be more pee pee. I was expecting more pee pee. Kotaku yeah. is too cowardly to talk about a game like this in this way. Kotaku to talk. Yeah. You talk to. Oh, How about you tacos? The third type are people who find this game to be too easy. Oh. But the way that they explain it is like you are just very good at this kind of game if that makes sense it, is it that they is it like i've i'm good at souls like and this is your boilerplate souls like yeah, well it's it's more like i've beaten bloodborne you've beaten bloodborne you guys both beat it together yes. Oh, I remember that. It was it was you're down to your last little sliver of yeah, life. I shot a guy. In my in my mind, I know that Joe is holding the controller, but in my mind I've always considered Kim to be she, the one she who was, actually She was she was holding the buttons. I was <laughs> I yeah, I was controlling the buttons, but Joe was you know, the one it, actually touching okay, them. Okay, this is a little bit of a side <laughs> dish. You can really do that now. Like if you get uh if you, on the Xbox at least, I can get a two controllers and I can set it up that like I control the movement and you control the buttons. It's fucking rad. Oh, that would be awesome for like children or me. The, the complaints are essentially like, this game is pathetic. It's so easy. There's no depth to the combat. Let me give you a perfect example. And then they have like a thesis statement about like <laughs> combat. Webster's dictionary defines <laughs> combat as it is hog wild. The, the number of people that are mad at this game because it is easy to them. There's this like ongoing theme for people who really like or hate Soulsborne games 
were I don't know how they walk around with just the biggest chips on their shoulders. Yeah. I don't quite understand how they manage to not just topple over every time one of these games comes out. Well, it's just that you can't make people happy is what we're learning over and over and over again. Or Either. that like you can't if you define your worth by I'm good at a specific type of video game, then eventually you're going to die from being miserable. And like that's just and then Jeff, you have about 30 seconds to say that was like a joke. That was also um, an inside joke <laughs> for all my souls heads Thank out you. there. What's Thank up? Thank you very much for doing that. What's up, Harry Pete? <laughs> Uh, uh, Stinky John, Susan, and uh, Gary B. Blow. Most of those were euphemisms for genitalia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's 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 the name of this episode. <laughs> euphemisms. <laughs> euphemisms. <laughs> yeah. Are, 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 are euphemisms are essentially pee pee and whiz. Um, <laughs> how about some of these reviews, Jeff? Let's find out if Lies of a P is worth our. No money at all from my perspective, I, but $60 for those of you who aren't on Game Pass. I can't wait to read some of these absolutely um, annoying opinions from, I'm sorry, amazing I tried to find a couple of good ones, but we might, yeah. I might have to like go back to the well and find like a big one. That's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm in here. Oh, no, I, I like them. I like okay. Let's see. From Steam user Neo, quote, probably one of the best Souls-like games. So many caveats. Yeah. Probably one of the best. You'll never know. It's Schrodinger's are so Probably bold. one of. Basically what they're saying, it's yeah. probably not the worst one. However. I wonder what's, what's the worst one considered amongst Soulsborne fans? I'm sure that there's a YouTube channel whose job it is to find out. Okay. However, it feels clunky, unfair, and stiff, like my wiener. They, they preface this next part with literally the word rant, i'm sorry like you did HD, say like, clunky unfair and stiff like my wiener you fucking rodney dangerfield that was over here that was rant. doesn't matter if you get a perfect parry there is another slap coming from the enemy towards you before you'll get a chance to parry Quick, again what's a perfect parry do you guys know matthew <laughs> Correct. jeff please go on <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna go. It was for me. It was between Steve and Matthew. <laughs> I went with, I went with absolute, my gut. The absolute speed you spat that out <laughs> literally like like shook me to my core to where. <laughs> Good Christ. <laughs> and I'm glad that you said that because in my head there was like a long pause where I was just like, Kim, say the word. Say, what you say it. Say it. Go out. And then it was like somebody had to go up the stairs and grab Matthew and then carry it downstairs to my mouth. It's like a Kim, like your internal Kims are like one's dressed as a fireman carrying you dressed as Matthew it's Perry like downstairs. It's like a game of lemmings in there. She's just trying to get the thought to the mouth. <laughs> go 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 it's gotta be said quickly or it's useless um, does it matter if you get a perfect parry there is another slap coming from the enemy towards you before oh you get a chance God. to parry again right. um, some enemies have a one hit kill by that I mean you'll get pancaked by a repeated hit combo from the enemy until you die actually that sounds I like I could have guessed that <laughs> Well, here's the thing is that's a, they said it's a one hit kill, but they call it a hit combo. Hit combo means more than one hit, my friend. What they what they mean, Jeff, is um the my controller's broken. Oh yeah, yeah no. And my dad works for Nintendo. No, well my dad did work and he got fired from Nintendo, which is why his Nintendo powers aren't working with me anymore. It's still fun to play, but gets really annoying sometimes. I hate this that game. That's good, Jeff, by the way. I didn't say it at the time, but that was a good it's okay. Uh, it's still fun to play, but it gets really annoying sometimes. I hate this game. I will beat it. Was this review? And then it wow. just ends right there. I feel like there should have been more to that. I think you forgot. Part I think of the I just review. cut off. I did a copy and paste of the right spot. Well, it probably said something like, was this review good? Or yeah, would you find like this that. review helpful? Yeah. And we did because, because that's, what, that's our role. This, this person seems torn. Yeah, because they're going to play the whole game, which is that. I mean, but I guess some people just will always finish the game. But I do think any game that you're going to finish, you obviously like it a little. This person is just frustrated by it being hard, unfair, and too, diff too difficult because it is unfair. That's what I find sort of fascinating is they're like, this game feels unfair and clunky. But if you were just like sailing through it, would you give a shit about that? 
Like, would you even notice I mean, it? I, I guess I'd want to play and see what they're talking about because I feel like some people mistake like like intentional design choice by mistakes. Like games where they're like the player moves too slowly or like they they feel like they're they're really heavy, and I feel like that's usually a thing that the developer probably did on purpose. It's not like the game's supposed to be doing something else than what it's doing. Yeah. Right. It's supposed to, it's supposed to do that. You just don't like the thing that it's doing. Yeah. Like, it's fine. It's yeah. not the game's problem. It's you. I mean, you're, you perfect. Problem. you're perfect. You're perfect. Hey, you're, hey, listen, you're perfect. Yeah. You're perfect. You're in, God's, in God's eyes. Yeah. You're perfect. But God, yeah. in this case, is the person who made you, which is Geppetto. Yeah. Is Geppetto in this game? Hey, Jeff, what's the game? What's the game called? I was called Lies of Pee Pee. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, Peepetto okay. is definitely in there. It's, <laughs> Jep- it's, his, two- it's his daddy. Jepepe. <laughs> There's a P in Geppetto, too. Yeah, there would, ha- there would have to be if he's the dad. There, there ha- Look, for the last time, peeing is not how you get her pregnant. Debatable. Yeah, I'm going to hold out on agreeing or disagreeing. I'm just going to hold can. in on that one. Technology can do so much these days. Stop peeing on people. No, Die Kim. You can't, and also, you should block that one back a little bit. There are a lot of babies out there who are upset at that thought. All right, do you want another, another yeah, one? Yeah, I mean, like, this game is going to be hard like a Souls game is hard. And what's sad is you're probably going to be someone who is going to quit. If you suck at it and do a bad job, you're going to think it's the game and not you, which actually is kind of what these games are for. If I'm being completely honest, why would you lie? Pinocchio? Why would you lie? Why would you this lie? game grew a nose? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so wait, you don't grow a nose in the game. Well, the loading bar is a nose. So when it says saying now loading, it says now lying. You see a nose go across the screen. That's a little bit too on the nose. Uh, that's fucking good that thing you just said what else we got in this review review all right well, i'm kind of i'm kind of looking through there's a lot of similarity with a lot of these i liked that one liner right in the beginning oh okay um from full <laughs> from full ligon kim is that one no from that? whitney okay this game slaps with no strings attached yeah eh? 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 that's a good that's a good pull quote for the box fucking got it that's the that's the that's the Zack Snyder yeah. quote right there. That's what you want. So, Joe, you've played this game, yeah? Yeah, I kind of went against our bylaws, but yes, I have played this game. Yeah. Are there strings attached? As a matter of fact, the first secondary attack you get, it is using a string. You throw a you throw okay, a cool. string at somebody. Well, there you go. So Whitney, yeah. you fucking liar. But one string yes. attached. A single string. Oh, so this is multiple strings. I said no okay, strings. Okay, no, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. I haven't upgraded it. I think you can upgrade it to do more. To get plural. strings plural? Yeah. Well, Whitney hasn't worked that far into the game yet. They didn't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a pretty okay. tough Well, game. we'll have to have a special episode later on where we come back and reassess Whitney's review. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's it. But see, I I like the review because it is it's it does the thing where the gamer gets to be the ha-ha, but it still says... It was a good game. It's a good game. You'll like it. Yeah. N- no notes. It's a good game. Slaps. No, 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 no notes. Just a good game. No it's just attached. a good game. I'm going to say that's a good phrase. Just instead of saying no notes, perfect. Just say, yep. Uh, I just meal delicious. No strings attached. Slaps. 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 No slaps no strings as attached. the kids would say. Yeah. It's got that riz. Um, all right. We want another one that's more than a sentence long. Absolutely. All right. Give it to me. This one has no, pu- no punctuation or capitalization. Uh, this is from Steam user Alucard, who I've heard of before. With a name like that, you know they're a gamer. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to give this game a no for now until the devs give this a balance in parrying slash perfect guard mechanics. Uh-huh. There it goes again. It feels not right. It feels like you need a 100% accuracy for parrying, not like in Sekiro or Themesia. I don't know what Themesia is. I guess it's a Soulsborne game. Let me confirm. Uh, when you parry, it feels good, but here it's not. That, that's, that's, ooh, that's that. I get that. I get that. I see what they're saying. Don't get me wrong. This game is great. My only problem was the parrying timing. It feels not right. Edit. Oh, they came back and edited, which I, I respect. As for today, I hope the devs give this game a balance for the amulets. They are so heavy. <laughs> they are so heavy. <laughs> I just, I know it probably means in the game, but I'm just thinking like when you buy this game, you, they make you wear physically in the real world, these annulets. <laughs> Several. They're so, they are so heavy. heavy. <laughs> they are so heavy. 
and I hope I can move my character right away when I was downed and not being pancaked. Oh, pancaked? It's the second time we've seen pancaked. Yeah, used. pancaked. I wonder if this person read that other review or, or vice maybe versa. Just, well, soul may, you know what? Maybe everyone who plays this needs pancakes. And that's what they're thinking about. Maybe they're just is hungry. there a breakfast theme? Yeah, is there a breakfast theme? Peeps also is for pancakes. Lies of lies oh, yeah. of, pan, lies lies of, pancakes. of pancakes. pancakes. Okay, now... And if you don't get it with, and if they, if they bring them out and you ask if they're gluten free and they say yes or no, if they're lying, mm-hmm. you get another stack. And there's no, and by no strings attached, you're talking about syrup primarily. Yeah. Just the strings just of the, syrup. The, that sounds the, awful. The thre- the also of syrup as that pours over the, the idea that they lied to you about it being gluten free. And so you get twice as much. Mm. Is not a super big draw for people who can't have gluten. I think that the lesson here is that this particular IHOP is probably not going to make it. Yeah, this the new IHOP Lies of P crossover event just isn't the hitting. IHOP, the IHOP, the IHOP P, the International House of Pinocchio <laughs> of penises. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. All right, there's more to this review. They are so heavy, and I hope I can move my character right away when I was downed and not being pancaked. So I guess this thing that you have to wear gives your character weight. You don't have to wear them. You don't have to wear them. Yeah. Oh, this person just chooses to wear them, and they hate yeah. it. Yeah, and they're, they're angry at the devs. 30 plus hours in, I'm, stealing, I'm still fighting King of Puppets, and I'm losing my mind right now. Edit number two. <laughs> For, <laughs> day 74. Um, <laughs> I've been on this island with Lies of P for so long. Uh, edit two. As for now, three days... I'm still fighting Romeo and I'm hating myself. I'm wondering why the others, they keep perfecting the fight for this boss. What the hell? How am what? I? Because do- there's no, there's no punctuation. So I don't know where there's stopping points. It's weird. As for now, three days, I'm still fighting Romeo and I'm hating myself. I'm wondering why the others, they keep perfecting the fight for this boss. Is Alucard having a bit of a, bit of a moment right <laughs> here? Why other people play good, I play no no. Edit two, I have suffered a stroke while playing Lies of P. <laughs> Edit three, I have uh, started being unable to know where I end and P begin. How am I dodging that annoying fire attacks? I'm seeing annoying hitboxes too. Dear devs, fix this shit. I'm assuming shit is four hearts. Oh. Fix this shit ASAP. This game is great, but come on. Uh, this is where we and find also, out that Alucard has not been playing this game at all. And no. this is just a wild. <laughs> couple of coincidences on top of some kind of break that that alucard is going they took several mushrooms Mm -hmm. and for fuck's sake make the specter beefy a little bit pointless of summoning it when it takes five hits and it's done did i say 41 hours and i'm still fighting romeo i don't know man sounds like a skill issue to me so we're gonna just we're going to prey on the idea that Alucard's safe and not going through some kind of episode because uh, mm-hmm. that seems... Yeah, it kind of seems like that was what going on, yeah. but I'm going to say probably they were just frustrated when they were writing that I and they're in, a good, they're in a better place now. It sounds like as they were playing the game, they got dumber is, my, is what I was I cannot was- I- imagine a person who would sit down... And one who would write a user review. I know that we like are doing, we're reading them, but it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know how anyone could have the energy to do this, this activity. So we write the review, let alone come back later Mm -hmm. and change it, like continue the narrative. Like it, it just, it, it does not make sense that you would do this. Well, I mean, they do have a lot of, publications will have like reviews in process when it's a like an MMO you know or there's content wasn't immediately available at, 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 the, at the start at when it was released you know but this is like they're like basically live tweeting Dear their- diary I am 41 <laughs> hours into lies of P well and, exactly and, and, and edit one, edit number one 30 hours in edit number two he spent another 11 hours on this game stumbled his way back to his laptop <laughs> <laughs> ruling from one side of his mouth. Also, didn't this game get released yesterday? Yeah, well, he's played hours, in the past 48 hours 31 of them on this yeah. game. At least. You need to sleep, Alucard. That's probably why <laughs> you're not doing so hot. You're tired. You're so tired. Uh, this game makes my stomach hurt. Also makes my backside smell like shit. <laughs> we'll be back in 17 hours with new updates my, after I may, plug some I've, more time I've into it. After playing this game, my eyes just wouldn't stop burning. 
I, my bowels loosen themselves after every boss fight. Six out of four. <laughs> you know what? I really wish that was a thing, Jeff. If this game helped you make... Make, make bears? No, go poopies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, then then you could... That would be amazing. Yeah. Why, haven't and they, then... why haven't they combined video games with, like, others, like, you know, give me some medication properties, you know, like, I... This game soothes my heartburn, loosens my bowels. Oh, uh, like, you're... Oh, well, like, hey, you're you're not t- doing so hot. Play two rounds of this game and, and, and call me in the morning. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it releases the tension from certain muscle groups, well, you know. Well, they actually... They just came out with a video game VR system... That apparently is supposed to cure amblyopia, which is cool. What is that? It's the thing that I have where one of my eyes doesn't focus. Oh. Like science was basically like, well, first they were like, well, you can't do anything about it until after the age of five. And then they're like, by the age of seven, the the bonds of the, op, you know, like of the brain are done. You're not going to be able to do anything. And then there's some doctors who say like 10 years old, but this new VR video game thing, Luminopia or something, patients who are like, in their 20s have found that they it can actually help improve their their depth perception and and actually get them sight in that eye that they didn't have sight in so i'm really trying to get a rep to give me the fucking game <laughs> yeah you're not 20 Cam, nor are you in your 20s anymore yeah but it's still it's the idea is that it's for it's for adults like formed humans okay Okay. But did it say for Kim's? It did not say for Kim's. I'd be careful then. It might have the adverse effect. The other (laughs) eye, your eye just falls out. The other eye gets weaker? That's a possibility. Unless they have a magic VR headset, I feel like you could just get this. It's like a video. Well, no, it's like I a mean, game of the headset, right? Or does it massage your well, eyeball? Does it go inside your brain? No, it's absolutely. I actually think it is a headset that you actually watch. You have to like dial in a prescription and you can like watch TV and stuff like that on it. And the idea is I think that it it's almost like patching. Yeah, prescribe some pixels. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, I get prescribed <laughs> pixels. And it's like it's like six hundred dollars or something, which if it actually worked would be amazing. But they don't know how long or how effective it is. I guess my question would be like, do you have to use it more than once? I mean, like, yeah, is see, it like, it definitely I, see it. yeah, it's, it's therapy. You have to use it all the time. 700 wow. plus hours of kids shows and movies. It says it's gone mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And it's, um, train your it's highly effective because like most kids don't like to do patching because they're embarrassed to have their eye covered. So it's very unsuccessful. Mm. But when kids find out that they can just sit and watch TV and play video games, they're like, Fuck yeah, yeah. That's, I, I'll do that. Yeah, it's it's by far it blows everything else out of the okay, water. Okay, wait, no, hang on, Kim. Um, Luminopia is a software only therapeutic designed to be used with commercially available VR headsets. Yeah, Kim. Oh, you, you can well, go get I yourself. have a commercially available VR headset. I have an Oculus Two and an Oculus. Yeah, you can oh. probably just get this if they if you got yeah. prescribed the the program. Yeah, I have to be. Well, I have to be prescribed it though. Is the thing, and I we don't have I don't have a rep for it, and you can't just get it. So we have to first. I have to get a rep, which I can get. But I, I just haven't done that yet. That's um, pretty cool. Is a f- but then I want them to give it to me for free. Tell them that you do a podcast about video games. That's something. <laughs> that might work on that. Yeah. They don't know. They, yeah, you're right. You'll <laughs> tell, tell them you'll make it cool for the younger generation. I will never make anything cool for the younger generation. I cannot fake that. That's such a cool thing. It's really fucking cool, Joe. It, it's, I mean, like my whole life I've been told that this thing that I have is irreversible and I'll never have depth reception and I'll never have vision in that eye. And then just like, we told you that recently. Yeah, you and, I, Joe I, and I both said that to you. I know you both said that to me and I was, I thought it was kind of hurtful actually. Cause I, <laughs> yeah, I well, know guys. Well, also now that there's a cure for it. Now I'm going to just fucking rip India for it's like, now nah, you just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't call my eye lazy. It just chooses not to work. <laughs> it's independently wealthy. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's well, take, Jeff, you got another review for us? Breath and we'll have back. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. It's like it's like they found the cure for cancer, but for Kim's. But for Kim, yeah, just well, this is just this one thing. You guys want to get wrecked? I've been wishing that you would ask me. <laughs> this is from R slash Gaming Suggestions. User Lil Scon asks games that my long distance girlfriend and I can play together. Oh, she in Canada. Oh. Well, looking for games that we can play for a night or two that are co-op, preferably cheaper and puzzle or story based. She's not very experienced in gaming, so probably not something with a steep learning curve. Thanks. Here's my solution. Dump your girlfriend and get a cool gamer girlfriend that is well, good at video games. Yeah. I just said, yeah, like reflectively. <laughs> I don't agree with that, Jeff. That's horrible. <laughs> 
Get you an S rank. Get you a diamond ranked girlfriend, man. What yeah. Are you doing? Oh my god. I think Minecraft is too hard for your girlfriend, and it's also like not like a cute game that you can play with your girlfriend. Uh, but Animal Crossing is a cute game that That's you can play with for your girlfriend. Game. But a non gamer is probably not going to have a Switch. And that would be that's an expensive investment. Well, that's my question. Does he say what platforms are 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 the options to use? No, they and have, it, they both have it. It leads me to think that PC. I guess no. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm P- thinking phone. Oh, oh, really? Phone? I'm thinking are smartphone. There phone hey, listen, games? If you know anything about video game consoles, you know that the greatest video game console is, I guess, the next iPhone. Apparently, yeah. I was seeing that you could play games that oh. are three years old on it. I can't wait. Can't wait for that. What about Mario Kart Tour? Or Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. That's, that's, a, that's a game on yeah, the phone. That's a good game that you can play together. You know what? We've never dipped into this, but if you have Apple Arcade, there's a lot of like wild shit on there that you could play. Really? Yeah. So like Apple Arcade, it's what Apple thinks the Xbox Game Pass is. They've only heard about it in whispered stories. They actually don't know the experience. But Apple Arcade has a lot of like really wild games on it. For starters, it's got Hello Kitty Island Adventure, like mm. number one on there. It's got Stardew Valley. That's pretty easy. You can do co-op on that one. It's- That's a great co-op option. It's got the Oregon Trail. Great relationship game, Oregon Trail. Find out whether or not you're going to make it. <laughs> That's <laughs> bleak. I have a I have a one that's a little bit off cuff and I haven't actually even played it myself. What is it? So you know how Netflix they have those um oh. shows that are basically like choose your own adventure games, but it's like you watch it and then you like choose options. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, Netflix just has games now, right? They just have games too, but I'm just like, if you want something where you get to like interact and you both probably have Netflix or you can share your account right now at least. Mm-hmm. Um, you can watch like I will, Danielle and I watched one. It was a Bear Grylls one, and you got to choose whether or not he like ate and did disgusting things to survive. It was amazing. And every time you pick the disgusting thing, it always cut to just like a really sad extra. Like, why? <laughs> Stop it! Why, why do they? <laughs> I'm a real man. Well, and it's sad because no matter what, he had to do both of those things anyways because they yeah. had to record both of Love them. That. I'm sure he liked it. Yeah. I'm looking at a game on Apple Arcade. Depending on how loose you want to describe the term co-op, uh, unless you mean like co-op, you cannot progress without the other person, which almost always is not what you mean. It's a game you can play with somebody else. And it's a game called What the Car? Go on. It's a racing game. It's a curse word that Transformers do. You're, you're a car, but instead of wheels, you have legs. Run through hundreds of unique levels by jumping, <laughs> flying with jetpacks, climbing buildings. So they'll do shit like car with legs, and then they'll have one like car with too many legs, <laughs> car with really long legs. Um, you can create levels. Things can get really silly. Uh, it looks pretty charming and fun. I like I, I like the things are going to get silly. Things that this game is going to get it. pretty silly. Well, if they both have a switch, just to put some options out there, they, Jeff, they both have a switch. Can, the only thing we can say with certainty is they probably both have a phone. I know. I'm just putting it out there if, in case. All right. Give me a good co-op because I have a switch. If they both have a switch and they both have like five bucks... Because that's cheap. I know. Um, Vampire Survivors is online co-op, Here we and go. you don't have to push. You don't have to push buttons for it. That's the thing that's nice is you just move your character around. The only button you have to push is to like go through the menu. You don't have to like do anything. You just have to navigate your little mans or ladies or monsters. So Kim, if you haven't played Vampire Survivors, I would suggest if you have an addictive personality, just don't. Okay, what's it called? Or do. <laughs> Vampires. It's, Vampire survivors. It's a game it's, that's basically um, drugs. It is literally at times a. Oh. It's a slot machine. You don't have to put money into. It's just, Kim. It's like if video games could also be cocaine. That's Vampire oh. Survivors. A lot of people think they can handle Vampire Survivors, and they can. That sounds nice. Vampire Survivors going to make me talk to people at parties. Maybe the inverse. No, because you'll be too busy playing Vampire Survivors. Yeah, Kim. you'll you'll forget your friends, your family, yeah. all of them. You'll stay up late at night in bed playing on your Switch Vampire Survivors because you want to get a little bit further in Vampire Survivors. But but this is the problem, right? Now, we've suggested Vampire Survivors, and we're assuming this person has a Switch. We don't know if they have a Switch or not. For this. For this. For this particular, you know, give them options. Now, there is one option that's good for all systems. I know. And that is Fortnite. Fortnite. Okay. And it is co-op because you will have to work together to understand what is fun about it, which is, I guess... yeah. 
making it to the top 10 through no effort of your own. Just hiding. Is there still like the PVE build mode? Is that still a thing at all? Do they still do that? There's no way to know, Jeff. No. There's no way There's pay, no way to know. You, you have to pay 5,000 V-Bucks to find out if there is still a PVE mode. Yeah. And, it's, and basically, if I pay the 5,000 V-Bucks, Epic Game Launchers like Cousin will call me and leave a message. And maybe it'll have the answer and maybe it won't. Nobody yeah. knows. They have a, you have to look on the back of the um, the pixels. There's that hotline, like the Nintendo hotline. You have to call it for Fortnite. The Fortnite hotline. I have to get all the copies of the the different like Fortnite seasons and arrange them into a map, like in the fucking Mountains of Madness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a fucking pull that no one got. Um, how about another review? Okay. Back one, to one more yeah. review. All right. One more review. Let's make it. Well, these are all kind of, yeah, there's all, all these are very similar. Um, aside from the little shorties from Steam user, the Axony. Okay. Uh, the game is beautiful. Okay, but lacks Ooh. some. In, but lacks. But 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 lacks. <laughs> but lacks some important polish as far as mechanics are concerned. Looks good. Play is bad. All right. Yes, it seems like the game wants you to chain parry. Parrying is all anyone has to say about this game in a way inspired by Sekiro, but doesn't let you combo into a block from an attack or vice versa. But imperfect timing leads to chip damage. Quick, what's chip? Wait, wait, wait. What's chip damage? I think chip damage is that just like you're whittling away at somebody. No, Jeff, it's actually when you drop chips. Oh, that's right. Like like poker chips? No, like, like Doritos. Potato, yeah, like potato chips? chips? Yeah. Okay, like because you get so mad, you crush your snacks. Right. Oh. My, these Doritos aren't so cool ranch anymore. Now they're angry ranch. That's right. That was hate. That was good too. <laughs> Uncool ranch. This is your mom's ranch. <laughs> this is soccer mom ranch. Um, I say not my mom. My mom's cool. Mm, Continue. Does your mom listen to this podcast, Kim? She might. She's mm. pretty cool. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna repeat that sentence because it has a lot of like super esoteric terminology yeah. in here that even I do not understand. It seems like the game wants you to chain parry in a way inspired by Sekiro, but doesn't let you combo into a block from an attack or vice versa. But imperfect timing leads to chip damage and Solzhen esque guard breaks. Period. Oh. Learning. Oh no, says Kim. <laughs> after <laughs> after the, that string of very strange de de descriptors. <laughs> Learning a boss's moveset forces a slow and methodical rhythm, but the fights themselves demand a fast and aggressive play style in order to win. Looks great. And is mostly fun. But much of the time, it feels like the game forces you to suffer rather than forcing you to get better. Hmm. Oh, huh. okay. The game doesn't do anything. It wants you to suffer. Yeah. The, ga I, the game becomes sentient and it tells you that your life is meaningless. You can just set that controller down at any time. Instead of being like the teacher from Matilda who teaches you important things, it's the teacher from Harry Potter that like abused you. You're not learning anything from that teacher. Just suffering. What was that teacher's name? I didn't watch that one. Nobody knows. I was going to say Coach Carter, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, that's a different guy. <laughs> you don't get hyper armor. First of all, everyone... I don't know what that means. Like, can I get everyone, if you were wondering if you get hyper armor in this game... You don't. I have bad news for you. You don't get hyper armor. It sounds like a fake video game thing someone tried to think of. Like an executive was just like, ah, do we, we need to add hyper armor to the What's, game. What makes armor video games? Hyper Armor is a new gameplay mechanism introduced in Dark Souls 3 that applies to the effects of poise. Poise. P-O-I-S-E. Okay. Poise. Poise. Okay. It activates during the attack animations of the player, allowing them to avoid getting staggered if receiving a hit during this time. So you like, you do a little like, uh, like a little move. It, like yeah, a little, so mm. when you hit, as you're hitting someone, you can take damage, but not get knocked down. Okay. Poise. Okay. No, hyper armor. Everyone has poise. All right. So, okay. well, in this, Ouch. you don't get hyper armor. No. So I, it's great we learned that. It is irrelevant to Lies of P, which makes okay. slow strength builds very annoying to run. No hyper armor is also a major issue with this game's, quote, groggy, end quote, <laughs> mechanic. Yeah, it stayed up late. Uh, it requires you to either perfect parry or pressure the boss until their health bar turns white. Hey, did you get that hey. health bar? Boss, did you get the health bar? I'm going to ask you again in five minutes. <laughs> That's me pressuring the boss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's, okay. It was so like, it's a, it's a, it's like a bit. Yeah. It's like a funny thing I did. Okay. Can you explain it more for us? I don't so quite you imagine it. like, cause it said pressure the boss and it's like, what's a good way to pressure someone is you talk to them for a long time. 
and tell them to ask them if they did something. I'm feeling pressured over right and over now. again. Yeah. yeah, like like Jeff. Why don't you finish reading yeah. the review? Okay. It's at this point that if you land a fully charged heavy attack, that you can finally land a major blow in the form of a quote fatal attack end quote. Uh, bosses can still attack you during the four to five second window and will always interrupt your charge if they connect and you don't have and can't get hyper armor. Just to reiterate, there's no hyper armor. You do armor. not have. There's, there's no hyper nor armor. Nor can you obtain hyper armor. It is a dream that shall never be realized in this game. Only in the tattered writings of a mad person will you find hyper armor. And even then, it is just ravings. The Dead Sea Scrolls spoke of lotion. <laughs> they talked a lot on about today's lotion, episode of uh, uh, today's good episode skincare. of yeah, of ancient aliens. Uh, last sentence: Just buy it on sale if you really want to play it. Okay. Or if you really want to play it, buy it now. If you really want to play it, wouldn't you just buy it now? Uh, that's a that's a good question, Jeff. <laughs> It's almost no scenario where you can play this without buying it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just buy it on sale if you really want In to play it. In some way, you have to, unless you steal it. Yeah. So Maybe they just say you should steal this game if you really want it. You really want this game. But then it's like, you do you want this money. game more than you want money? If you really want to play this game and you want to get into heaven, buy it. Wait, just wait till it's on sale. But you, you could lie, which is what the game wants you to do. I learned how to lie because of video games. It's choosing the option that has a little bit of a trickster mask on it. Video <laughs> games taught me that if I say the right thing, there's like a cool little like jazz stinger that plays. Oh, that's that's disappointing in your real yeah, life. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you uh, were just said some dumb shit and then it was like, but do 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 like, like I did it. That's how I know I did it. I yes. did a good That's what I needed to do. That's what I needed to say. Yeah, I could really use that in real life. That and fast travel. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, fast. I dream about fast. So here's the best thing about the Axonies review because we've been talking a lot around it. <laughs> we haven't actually said anything about it. But yeah, because we do. I do want to get to the end of this where we we so, decide whether or not we the, sh- should recommend the value, this game. The value of the Axonies review is the only way that you were going to dislike this game is if the version of you that's playing it had already played it. You have seen through the eye of time. <laughs> you know this game's every move before you play it. Like, I played every Soulsborne game. I do not know these words. I've gotten to the yeah. credits on every one of them. I don't know what any of these words mean. But apparently, the Axony does. And I guess that that's unacceptable. Well, I think I think this tries to speak to what I, I kind of get the vibe from some of the other reviews is that the the Soulsborn player in question, the Axony, and some of the others perceive the genre as sort of like an equation that you should just know how to solve. Yeah. Like once you know how to solve it, you should never be bad at it. You know how to parry. You know how to. And they get frustrated when the game still beats the shit out of them, even though they are so familiar with. Now, the Jeff, it sounds like you're trying to very in a highbrow way say they're mad because the game cheats. I'm sorry. I'm trying to say that again. It is a skill issue, mm. and also sometimes games just hard and will be hard. Games be being hard, bro. My controller. I am using the Mad Cats controller. I had to use the Mad Cats controller. My brother took the other one. I have drift on all the buttons. All the buttons are drifting. Recently, we bought like our fifth Joy-Con set because of drift. Yeah. How's that working out for you? It's just, I mean, like, look, Nintendo, I love you and I love the Nintendo Switch, but fuck you and your awful way of making those controllers. Yeah, the, the controllers do suck. I Don't was worry, they're, on you, they're but not yeah. going to fix it. They've made them for seven years now. They're just not fixing it. But so what are we... So let's wrap this up. The answer is yes, we're going to play it. It's going to be a hard game. There, I didn't ask if there was hyper armor. Should I have? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But, but now you know the answer because of these reviews. Yeah. Now you know maybe what those words mean. Yeah. I, now I know hyper armor <laughs> is not just a fun thing that they made up for a TV show when they didn't know how to do real video game dialogue. <laughs> It's not just a thing on like the Big Bang Theory that just they decided to throw in yeah. there all of a sudden. Yeah. We've learned we've learned a lot about whether we should play this, and the answer yeah. seems yes. Yeah, I, I I think I would enjoy it because I do not look at the Soulsborne genre as some sort of um, like some thing that's just like it's going to be the same no matter what. There's and, only like, one right way one. to play games, Jeff, and that's not it. So, and thank you for listening to Player Two. Uh, we appreciate you spending some time. Uh, listening to our fun goofs and gaffes about video games, etc. Do you guys have any genuine recommendations for the people? Tonight, I do not. 
I have downloaded and I've been playing. It's a gacha game, kind of. Is it called Honkai it's, Star Rail? It's not. I haven't. I'm not really. I've never gotten into. I tried playing. What's the other one? The main one that everyone loves? Genshin Impact. Yeah, I tried playing that. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, that's um, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Oh, oh which is a, that's the one where Sephiroth has a phone. Uh, no, that's you're thinking of Crisis Core is what you're thinking of. Okay. There's a there's a free game on um, mobile. It's Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, and and you know, it's like a gacha game. You get to log in, you run your characters through, you know, the missions, and you get to collect cool little outfits for your your man. So Ooh. it's a nice little. If you like Final Fantasy VII. It's a fun little, it's one of those games where I'm just like, games on phones can look fantastic. That's what Tim Cook is saying from Beyond the Grave. Yeah, they can look great. I mean, VR runs on cell phone technology. Or whatever. Oh. And aside from that, um, I've been playing more Final Fantasy 16. I'll probably continue playing it for a while longer. I've gotten to a point where I'm just like, I find the, the, the voice cast's real life personas endearing enough where I just want to support them. It's okay that you like something that's not good, Jeff. It's okay that you you like. It's okay that you think something's bad. We can have differing opinions we, because we we're we can, but the internet can't. This is what we've learned. No. Um. Well. Well. No. That's why. That's why when Joe wrote his Final Fantasy 16 one minute review, which will be done at some point or another, I then decided to go back and put in a new part on all of our one minute reviews where I distinguish who wrote it and who is narrating it oh. because I don't want Danielle to get flack for the opinions of one JoJo Lewis. I'm sorry if she's a woman <laughs> on the internet. It's too late for that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. All right. What, do you what are you playing, so, man? Well, I have been playing Lies of P, and I have been playing Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Those games kick ass in different ways, and I like them both. They are starkly different from one another. It's nice to have yeah. diversity. I will also recommend... <laughs> Kim. Not about society, Kim about says. Games. About video games. I'm also just going to throw out there another, <laughs> another quick thing. I meant to recommend it last week, and I forgot for whatever reason. Um, I want to recommend a podcast that I like to listen to. It's a medical podcast it's called Sawbones. Um, oh, yeah. I've heard of that. I really like it. We have a we have a Sawbones right. book here actually somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I have one more thing to throw in. Yeah. What it's is, what is it? Jeff? Um, I watch me some Chainsaw Man. I fucking love that show. It makes me laugh. And it looks great. Is one season. It makes me want to go read the manga, which all right. most anime does not do that. But it's on all Hulu. Right. It's all season one. It's like I don't know, like 12, 13 episodes. Dumbest main dumbest main characters I've ever seen, and the, I love them. They're great. That's saying something. Well, let's get, let's right, get one more review, Jeff, oh. and then we can go home. Also, give us a good review on your podcatcher of choice. All right. Last review is from Steam user Raskolnikov. Okay. It's just one single word. Twinkborn. Oh, okay. Makes you, it really makes you twink, doesn't it? Makes you... Make <laughs> <laughs> My name is JoJo. My name is Jeff. My name is Kim, and this has been Listen to Player 2, and euphemisms for genitalia are my real mom and dad. <laughs> that kind of makes sense still, actually. Yeah, I know that would work.